Hi, this is Dr. Joni Liu and welcome to Rapid Injury Recovery Facebook Live. And today's episode, I'm going to be talking about the three strategies that uh, we must take in order to let go of worry and anxiety. And the reasons why we've got to do this are really simple because worry and anxiety affect a lot of people. And um, but before we start, you know, uh, tell your friends about what's going on right now. Uh, tune in. Let me know how you feel about the broadcast, you know, the material that's on it. So let your friends know that I'm on right now because we're on live and we really need to talk about this particular topic, which is about letting go of worry and anxiety. Like I was saying, Worry and anxiety affect a lot of people and it affects you in ways that you may not even be aware of. One of the things that it does is that it uses up a lot of our time and energy and resources and it's not in a very constructive way because worry and anxiety is very negative, okay? And nothing good is ever going to come out of it because all you're doing is focusing on the problem. <laughs> and the problem is never going to come give you a solution unless you actually start taking your eyes off the problem and looking for the solution instead. I mean, worry anxiety is a killer of ambition. It's a uh, killer of initiative. It's going to paralyze you from doing the things that you need to do in order to step forward into your life. And this is so important for you to understand, okay? Um, I mean, worry and anxiety are one of the things that everybody has to live with from time to time. But if you worry about things on a, on a chronic level, uh, consistently, it's part of your personality, you make yourself sick, and you make other people sick of you too because being a worry wart is just not conducive of ever ever um, making a positive uh, impact on life okay so today I'm going to talk about three tools and strategies that you need to do the first one it or the first two is really to explain the things that uh, might make you worry, okay? That might make you feel helpless because that's really what anxiety and worry is all about. It's all about feeling helpless, being unable to make a difference in something that you need to make a difference in and some things that really do need to be let go, okay? So the first one is control. These two, these next two things are the things that I teach on a regular basis, okay? So we're going to talk about control first. What do you really have control over? Now, the good minds out there will say, well, the only thing we have under our control is ourselves. Okay, so the smart ones are going to say that. However, I really want to drive this point really much further, a lot further, because you have no control over other people, things, events, situations, even animals. You have no control over these things. <laughs> but you do have control over yourself. Yes, that's true. So the only thing that you have control over are explicitly your thoughts, your feelings, the decisions that you make, the actions that you take, and the results that you get. That's it. You do not have control over someone else's results, what somebody else is saying or feeling. You have no control over that at all. Okay? So, I want to emphasize what you do have control over. You have control over yourself only and again that means over you have control over your thoughts, your feelings, uh, the decisions that you make, the actions that you take based on those decisions and the results that you get. Now it's the same thing for number two responsibility. 
responsibility and control are actually twin sisters, okay? So what do you really what are you really responsible for? You are responsible for yourself again, okay? And very explicitly, you are responsible for how you feel, what you think about, um, the decisions that you make, the actions that you take, and again, the results that you get. Those are the things that you're responsible for. The other things, you know, you have to decide are even if you're in a situation where you're uh, in a business deal, uh, you know, if there's more than one person um, that uh, is involved with something with you, you know, the thing is, hi, the thing is, is that uh, we're talking about uh, the three strategies and tools for letting go of worry and anxiety. So um, right now I'm on number two. The first one was control. And the second one here is on responsibility. Okay. And again, what you're responsible for is what you think, how you feel, um, the decisions you make, the actions you take, and the results that you get. That's what you're responsible for. Now, you're not responsible for someone else's actions. You're not responsible for what someone else says, thinks, or feels. You're not responsible for situations that are out of your control. I mean, you have to think about that, right? What's in your control and what are you responsible for? Now, if you're in a situation where, you know, you're in a business or you're in a family, uh, you're responsible for what you do, okay? But not necessarily what they do. So if you're waiting on something that they're supposed to accomplish, then you have total control and responsibility for doing your part and get that done and finished, okay? And then maybe if they need help, then you can go over and help them with their part. But you've got to be responsible for what you do first. Okay, so we've got that under our belt, what you really do have control over and what you're really responsible for. And you have to examine those things by yourself because, I mean, I, I, I know that so many of my clients, so many of my students, when they find out what they're not responsible for, what they actually have no control over it starts lifting a huge burden off their shoulders and they feel so much better because a lot of us think that we have control over a lot of things that we really don't and uh, you know essentially it really comes down to stop being a busybody <laughs> mind your own business that's really what it comes down to mind your own business and you start setting an example you start being able to focus your energy on the things that really are truly important to you and you stop procrastinating on those things okay because i really believe that the reason why people go putting their noses into other people's business is because they're afraid to step forward into their own lives and that i believe is the truth Okay, now let's take it further. Here is a really great tool for letting go of worry and anxiety. And I teach this in my seminars. I teach this um, to my students. And because, um, you know, uh, they're one-on-one -on -one students, then I'm able to really go through this with them and to consult with them about ideal ways in order to solve the problem that they have, you know. So we do a lot of uh, outside the box thinking. We look at scenar possible scenarios because really when it comes down to it, we have to stop doing problem solving and we have to do possibility thinking, okay? And that opens up a huge, huge <laughs> world of 
of positivity, of taking positive, constructive action, because that in the end is what is really important. So, okay, so worry, worry again is a pain in the neck, uh, it's a headache, it's trouble, it's, um, it's something that's really bothering us, it's something that's imagined, and the thing is, is that when it comes to the brain, that uh, a problem becomes real, whether it really is real or whether it's imagined, okay? And as I said last time, worry is a prayer for trouble. And I'm sure you really don't want to pray for that because whatever you focus your mind on, you grow it. And if it's going to be, if you're going to grow something, then you might as well grow something that's going to be positive and constructive. Okay, so uh, what I want you to do is off the top of your head, if you got a piece of paper in front of you right now, is to list the things that are bothering you right now. Okay, and um, I want you then to also write beside each one of these items whether you have control over it. And beside that, I want you to write down whether you are, in actuality, responsible for it. Now, you go down the list and you tick off, yes, I'm in control, and yes, I'm responsible for it. So if you have something that is both I have control and I am responsible for it, that's the stuff that you should be paying attention to. All the rest of it, you let go let go <laughs> okay it's easier done than said okay let it go if you're not responsible for it or if you're not in control of it let it go right now it's none of your business so for the things that you actually are in control and are responsible for those are things that you must focus on okay so basically what you're going to do is going to be creating a plan. So you're going to brainstorm a, pr a plan of, you know, of, of all the steps that you need to take in order to deal with this particular problem that you have, that you're worried about, that you have anxiety about. Because the thing is, is that people have come to me and they tell me they don't know why they feel worried, why they feel anxious. Well, this is the perfect test, the perfect exercise in order to figure out what it is that's bothering you, okay? And it's really pinpoint, okay? Because normally speaking, it's just, it's usually just one major issue, sometimes two, but it's usually just one major issue that is really bothering somebody, okay? So I want you to complete the exercise. Create the plan, create whatever tasks that need to go in there. And then remember also that a plan changes, but your goal does not, okay? <laughs> so, so be flexible too. So don't wor get all worked up over that either. And at the end of this exercise, you will have a plan and you will start executing it. So deal with it. Don't let it fester. This is what I mean. Because the things that stay in our minds, that, that where we keep having nagging thoughts, those are the things that we're supposed to be taking care of. Okay? We have to take care of those things because they won't go away until we actually do something about it. And, and having these nagging thoughts is definitely a huge signal that we haven't dealt with something yet. So when I get these nagging thoughts, you know, uh, they come and go. And then when I realize, okay, this is the fifth, sixth <laughs> time. Okay, it happens to me too. Then I finally write it down. And then I know it's there. And then I do something about it. Okay? Okay, so until next time... Next week, we're back at our regular time in the afternoon at 3.30 p.m. Mountain Time, 5.30 p.m. Eastern Time. 
and I'll be talking about why you must let go of anger, okay? Because this is another thing that is affecting us on a daily basis. Okay, so talk to you soon. Bye. Oh, <laughs> oh yeah. And by the way, you can get uh, my Concussion Answers ebook on my website now. And you can also get, uh, you know, a, a quiz, nine, wh um, nine signs of a hidden brain injury, okay? Let's test yourself and find out how you're doing, okay? Because if you've been uh, having problems for a while, you haven't been feeling great for a while, and you're wondering why, well, maybe that's the reason. So go to my website and take the quiz on nine hidden signs, nine signs of a hidden brain injury, okay? So do that today. And if you know anybody who definitely has a concussion or PCS right now, please send them to Amazon to pick up my best-selling book, Heal Your Concussion, How to Quickly and Effectively Get Back in the Game. Okay, so I'll see you next week. Bye.